Hey, it's John True Vintage Guitar coming to you from the airport in Birmingham, Alabama. I am going on the first guitar safari of 2020. It is January 14th, and I'm really excited to go look at a 1954 Gibson Les Paul model uh, gold top. P90's Rap Tail should be an incredible guitar. But this is not the first time that I have been on a guitar safari to get a gold top, and the first time it ended in uh, sadness because I flew all the way to Buffalo, New York to look at this 54 gold top. It looked so nice. I mean, it, it looked untouched. When I got there, I found some undisclosed issues, and uh, the sellers were unwilling to compensate. So they spent the next four years trying to sell it, and eventually sold it for less than what I was offering them at the time. Um, so. So the story of this one is that a uh, college kid in San Diego, um, his grandfather had a Gibson Les Paul. It was a really clean gold top and uh, they inherited it from him. He passed away, um, not sure how long ago. It wasn't recently. Um, they held on to it, but nobody in the family is a guitar player, so there really wasn't a lot of use for the guitar. Um, so he reached out to me for an appraisal. He had had a couple people quote him some numbers. Um, but he wanted a detailed appraisal to see what was original and what was not on the guitar. Um, so I looked at the pictures of this guitar and was blown away. It looked amazing. Um, it looked to be all original except for possibly the switch tip. It had the original case and uh, I just loved the guitar. So I did a full write-up of every single thing I could think of uh, and an opinion of market value, replacement value. And then they spent the last five months trying to sell it locally and they were unable to get the price that they were looking for. So I had made an offer to buy the guitar about a month and a half ago and then um, you know they weren't really interested in, in selling to me and eventually I reached back out and increased my offer and he said that they were interested in the offer but they would only sell in person and in cash. They weren't going to do any shipping um, so I was going to have to fly there in order to buy the guitar. So uh, here I am in the airport in Birmingham, Alabama on my way to San Diego, California to buy this 1954 Gibson Les Paul model. I hope that when I get there that the guitar is as good as it looks in the pictures. I think it's going to be. Um, I'm really excited to go check it out. So um, looks like I'll get to see it tomorrow um, in the afternoon. So catch up with me on Instagram at Truvenge Guitar. Uh, this video is coming out after I buy the guitar. But uh, if you follow on Instagram, then um, you can kind of see those guitar safaris live because I'll be posting on the stories. So anyway, looking forward to showing it to you guys. I think it's going to be an incredible guitar. And thank you so much for following along. Right, that rental car does not disappoint, uh, but the sellers have postponed until 4 p.m. today, so I got pretty much all day to kill. I'm gonna head into this coffee shop here and see if I can find any um, other guitars to buy in the area and uh, hopefully fill that time and find something cool. Well, I didn't find anything this morning uh, after looking for something cool locally. Worked a couple of leads that um, will probably pay out in the future, but nothing right now. But uh, our sellers postponed from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So I'm out here kind of close by just hanging out. Wanted to show you guys what I'm gonna bring um, to check out the guitar. Start with this. This is the Stumac screwdriver kit. So it's got all the different screw heads that you're gonna want. Um, so you can kind of access the control cavity and truss rod cover and all that kind of stuff. It has all the right screw heads so you're not gonna round out the screws. So that's always nicely. If you wanna check out the pickups, you're gonna need the right screws. So got the Stumac kit. Secondly, I've got my black light. Um, probably can't see that. But yeah, so ah, these are mildly useful, depending on how your lighting is. Um, you know, if you've got pretty good lighting inside the place and you can kind of look at the reflections on stuff, then you can usually see repairs or other kind of finish work. But if you can't, then sometimes the black light is really helpful to spot that stuff, uh, especially if you're like at a guitar show or something like that where there's a lot of uh, variables and moving parts. Um, it's nice to just have a a uh, quick check with the black light on the back of the neck and other places if you think um, might reveal like some finish work or a prior headstock repair or something like that. So got a little black light. I've also got <laughs> also got my tiny AC30. Um, yeah, check that out. It's a little battery oper operated amplifier because they said they don't have an amplifier. 
So I'm gonna bring this with me just to kind of run through the pickup positions and um, check output and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's also fun if the sellers aren't guitar players like these people. Um, you know, the guitar is not gonna be properly playable, but if we can kind of scratch around on it a little bit, you know, everybody enjoys that, and of course I do as well. Um, so that's what I'm gonna bring out there. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you was the book that I'm reading to kind of prep for this guitar. I talked about it on Instagram. It is The Les Paul Legacy, um, The Early Years. So uh, this kind of talks about the history of Les Paul, how he got into guitar playing, and um, how he's performing with his wife, Mary Ford. Give this a, these people a second to head out. So yeah, it's by Rob Lawrence. This is an awesome book if you're into like gold tops and you know all different stuff. It even goes through the junior special TV model. It goes through all that stuff. It's got some really interesting research, interviews with people like Ted McCarty. It's kind of all through the book and just little anecdotes. Um, so yeah, if you want to learn more about Les Pauls, I recommend this book. There will be a link in the description. There's a second version of it that I recommended on that 1970 Les Paul Deluxe video that I did a few weeks back. I'll link to that as well. You should get both books because um, they're awesome. You know, I've got both. I paid my own money for them. They were not uh, given to me for free. And I love having them well worth the 20 bucks spent. Actually, I'm not sure how much they are, but I'll link to them on Amazon. So if you want to pick them up, you can pick them up there. So looks like I, bought, I got about, um, you know, an hour and a half or so to kill before heading out there to buy the guitar. But yeah, I think it's time. You know, I've been working towards this one for a while, so I'm excited to see it. Um, and I'll show you guys what I do. Finally, I just bought the guitar, left their house. The moment you've been waiting on this 1954 Gibson Les Paul model, here it is. Let me turn you around. All right, there it is. C clean original case, nice condition. Woo, a one family owned. 1954 Gibson Les Paul model, gold top. Wrap tail piece, beautiful condition. Got the old flat wound. You can even see a little bit of that orange silk um, since they were. If this was probably uh, Gibson made strings, um, probably from the 60s. Uh, so there's a little corrosion on all the parts. It hasn't been cleaned, adjusted, set up, or anything, um, at least since, uh, since the original owner died, which was in 1954. So we've got a little bit too much relief in the neck, but I checked the truss rod nut and it's nice working condition. Um, the only thing that I found that had been done is this switch tip was replaced. I've got a nice amber tip to go on there. But yeah, look at that. Some, lice, some, uh, some light checking. There it is, a little bit of greening and the bronze in the finish. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Got the uh, tall speed knobs. Um, great neck angle, good frets. We do have some fret wear. Let's see if we can kind of get a little bit, might increase our exposure a little bit. There we go. So yeah, not sure if you can kind of see how much fret wear is there, but it's really, really mild. I mean, there's certainly no risk of um, this needing a refret. Um, but it's plenty, plenty uh, dusty, dirty. I did plug it in. Um, the output jack was, you know, really corroded, so we were getting some connection issues, but I metered both pickups. They meter out at about uh, 7.2 or 3K, somewhere around there, both of them. Um, yeah, so, man, well worth the trip. Look at that. Whew. I am so excited to get this thing home and uh, get it set up, put some proper, you know, 10s or 11s on there, and... Uh, play it. God, look at that. Looks like the uh, lift in case uh, logo is kind of torn off underneath there. Ugh, looks so good. Okay, I'm going to turn this off and flip it over so we can look at the back. Alright, look at that. Nice slab of mahogany on the back, flats on, beautiful. No neck repairs, kind of see as we go up, you can see some playing wear. Beautiful, it was really light too, I'm surprised at how light it was, although I have not waited. 
um, I would say eight pound range. So they're the original tuners. Those are no-line Clusens with the opal, uh, commonly called keystone buttons. Yeah, that's the real deal. So this seller was the grandson of the original owner. His name was Andy. We had been talking since uh, September about the guitar and um, he kind of played a little bit of guitar, but he knew this was a little bit out of his league. So he never really played it, never had it set up or anything. They did nothing to it. Um, since the original owner died, his granddad, and I believe they said 1998. So yeah, that's it. 1954. Gibson Les Paul model, the gold top. Beautiful. So now I've got to get on the 5 North to sit in traffic to go all the way back to um, Oceanside. More on this one to come. Beautiful guitar, beautiful checking. Oh yeah, perfect match. 